Hello Internet, I'm the Disney Brain and welcome to the Girl Meets World Review. Last time, we wrapped up the Maya trilogy on an upside for her character. This time around, the event that many of us have either been anticipating or dreading since the season started. Yep, we finally made it to the Ski Lodge. Spoiler warning now, you know the drill. With all that said, let's dive into Girl Meets Ski Lodge, part 1. We kick things off with Mr. Matthews giving a heated lecture against the concept of nature. This directly relates to his own past since, as some of you know, the entire reason this ski lodge excursion is happening is because it represented a major turning point in Boy Meets World. So to ensure that things go more smoothly this time around, he's got a few chaperones on hand, including the long-awaited return of Josh Matthews. Thankfully, this episode also returns Smackle to us, who wasn't present at all during the Maya Chronicles, which does make some sense since the two aren't really that close. In any case, it's time to head up to the Ski Lodge where you'd expect some saucy drama-filled events to transpire, especially since they get there on Couples Weekend of all times. Instead, we get Riley somehow falling off the bus, which is meant to parallel how Cory also injured himself during his first Ski Lodge trip, except this version is a little more contrived and even the show admits that much. After that, we get a scene with the main cast talking about Furkle leaving the path to catch a rare moth for his collection, and Maya breaking the rules to save him. Funny how nobody seems to chide Farkle for breaking the rules first, but everyone immediately gets on Maya's case for doing the best possible thing she could have done in that situation. A situation that I wish they would have just filmed instead of just telling us about. Basic storytelling favors showing over telling, and diving deeper into that plot point would have been very preferable to what comes next. I don't know if these imagination sequences will become famous or infamous, especially since they seem to be tonally similar to the stuff everyone was so adamantly complaining about during Girl Meets Fish. This isn't really all that engaging or funny, it's just kind of corny and distracting, and you can tell that the writers use these sequences, which among other things are way too long, just to fill the space before part 2 premieres next week. Admittedly, Riley's sequence was a bit more engaging only because it's easier to get laughs out of an over-the-top version of Riley's world, because that sequence felt more self-aware and more intentional about its absurdity to overplay the whole so in love it hurts cliché. But this episode does do something smart with the onlookers by making them intentional parallels to us the audience and conveying how many of us might actually react or what we might actually expect out of this situation. So the love triangle trio continue to annoyingly skirt around the issue and not make a decision, but then one last thing happens before part one ends. Riley meets a guy, a guy who just so happens to work at the ski lodge. You know immediately what they're going for with the introduction of this guy, but we'll have to wait until next week to actually learn much about him and what role his character will play, if any, in the established friend group dynamic. And that's Girl Meets Ski Lodge Part 1, an episode that's difficult to review because, similar to Part 1 of Girl Meets High School, it's by no means a self-contained episode, so understanding how certain plot points and narrative structures will affect later episodes is nearly impossible at this point. But Unlike Girl Meets High School, which I thought was an intelligent season premiere and a good episode in its own right, this episode felt like simply a way to pass the time. Seriously, the plot of this episode could be read as follows. Cass goes to Ski Lodge. Cass struggles with, but ultimately does nothing about the love triangle with the assistance of cheesy and ultimately pointless imagination sequences, and then Random Boy appears. Continued in Part 2. And that's really it. This episode, to its credit, had a lot of good jokes and humor in general, even during some of the cheesier moments. My issue with those scenes aren't how they're constructed or how corny they can be at times. We got similar scenes in Girl Meets Fish, but the difference is that those scenes felt necessary to that episode. Girl Meets Fish was filmed primarily from Augie's perspective, so of course it's going to look cheesy and goofy. He's a kid, and if it had looked any other way, then the episode would have made even less sense. But here, the imagination scenes convey such an overly drastic version of both Maya and Riley's personalities that it's hard to get invested, especially since it feels like those scenes are only there to pass the time and maybe entertain a very specific fraction of the Girl Meets World fandom. But I will say, Zay is probably the MVP of this episode, and that's not something I think I've said about any episode before. His jokes pretty much all land, and his reactions to what's happening all feel very genuine and in character. I referred to him as derivative early on, but I really do think that at the tail end of Season 2, and now going into Season 3, he really has found a nice place amongst the rest of the main cast, and I like that. I like it when characters I didn't start off liking evolve into characters that I end up liking. All in all, I wouldn't call Ski Lodge Part 1 a particularly great episode, even though it does have some good moments, and I feel like down the line, all anyone will remember as being relevant are the last two minutes. Like I said, the humor is definitely there, especially with Zay, but most of the episode is literally waiting around for something to happen, so much so that they have to fill way too much time with some spy thriller parody of all things. But I'll never fault anyone for being entertained by what amounts to an extended side plot. For some people, the imagination sequences might be the highlights of this episode, and there's nothing wrong with that, but that kind of thing just doesn't do it for me. Alright then. Wow. That was a short review. 
Hmm, am I missing anything? Am I missing anything? Alright, some quick character points. Josh is back, and he's decent in his role. Nothing earth-shattering, but it's nice to see him again after injuries kept him out of the tail end of Season 2. Corey's role in all of this is made even more hilarious if you know the original Ski Lodge story, so if you haven't seen it, watch it. It's just a really captivating arc. I really don't care who ends up with who, I'm way more concerned with what the next Farkle-focused episode will look like, assuming that one is coming. And I love Smackle as a character. Not exactly breaking news, but I'm not the biggest fan of the show using her almost exclusively as some sort of weird boy gawking robot for no good reason, plus it contradicts with the way she interacted with the rest of the cast in Season 2. And lastly, as I mentioned, I'm finally fully sold on Zay as a character, and in light of that, I really do want to see what a Zay-focused episode would look like, especially if they go the inner turmoil route that Riley briefly mentioned a few episodes ago. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this review, go ahead and throw it on the like, sub for more, and share it all over the internet. And don't forget to follow the Disney Brain on Facebook and Twitter for updates. Links down below. The coming days will finally bring us the top 10 best DCOMs, otherwise known as the most stressful, painstaking, and complicated video I will probably ever create. I still don't know if the order is quite right, but hopefully you guys will enjoy the video regardless. There will be other videos too, but right now I just need to buckle down and focus on making this one as perfect as I can. So. Look forward to that. Until then. The Lodge was almost the end of Cory and Topanga, America's sweethearts. <laughs> and now I know something's gonna happen there for you. So I am preparing you for nature.